just had a train that got stopped. Got here and a condenser is cycling on and off, on and off, on and off. This is just a straight cooling unit. I had to replace the uh, TXV on this device here a couple months ago. And now this one is pretty much having the same issues. Our VAP temps are way low. That pressure is skyrocketing stupid. There's only so much you can do here. So we're going to go inside and look. But it appears to me either a filter dryer is plugged solid or the TXV is taking a dump. We'll kick it back on, fill across that, check temp. We may have a filter dryer that's not working. All right, just kicked it back on. Not warm at all. That's 600 and some pounds. All right, we cut it out. You can blow right through it, no problem at all. So it's not the filter dryer. Only thing left is TXV. So we'll need to order a new one. All right, today we ended up changing a TXV out. Got to insulate our bulb yet. Luckily this one's all Chatliff style fittings. Got the new filter dryer on there. Bent us up some new 90s. And uh, we purged with nitrogen while we were brazing it up. So we've got our line set going through there. It's not a real long line set, but it is a five ton unit. So far we have the Schrader cores pulled out. We've got our core tools ready to go. I mentioned in the past I like my C and D. The ones I got with my True Blue hoses are pretty nice too. I just want to wear these out first before I start into the next ones. So hose is ready to go. I've got the half inch fitting there, the 3 8 fitting on the other end there. We're going to get them hooked up to our 8 CFM field piece pump and then uh, we're going to show how quickly we can get this thing evacuated. We can go ahead and check our oil first. The uh, Machine's been used for a couple pull downs. It usually uh, takes about 22 seconds to change oil on this thing. So it's a really nice pump, been real happy with it so far. Okay, we're gonna check our ultimate pull down here on our pump. Yeah, our oil's getting a little saturated, but that's more than adequate for what we're gonna do here. Let's just see how long it takes to do with this system this way i mean the biggest complaint or excuse i should say is that it takes too long it's just such a waste of time and it's you're, you're just wasting time doing that crap it's not needed so let's let the clock begin we're already starting it but for backup plan we'll go ahead and start with the watch so we've got those hooked up Gonna go ahead and get our core tools on here. Make it a little easier, just do them ahead of time. <clears throat> I like using the uh, caps and stuff on there. It kind of keeps the crap out. You ever accidentally drop your hose? We've got some of that nylog on there and that stuff just absorbs every pit of dirt. So, helps keep that from happening. So we've got, like I said, half inch adapter here, three eighths adapter here, built in tree in the field piece pump. Really nice pump. So put our three eighths on our liquid line. It's also where we're gonna put our vacuum gauge. Luckily, they give you enough room to get these in here. Some of the manufacturers do not. The other problem you'll run into sometimes is you can't shut the valve off to do the blank off test. So that becomes a kind of a pain too. Well, we're a minute and 38 seconds, so. This is taking humongous amounts of time. Okay, get our gauge on here, waking back up. I 
Now, this is a uh, system, an existing system. Was, uh, we, like I said, we made a repair on it. So there's gonna be some oil in the evaporator, which is gonna slow down your evacuation process. It's gonna take a little longer than if it was just a uh, normal, a normal startup. So our actual start time now, as far as the pull down, we're at 2.30. What's up, guys? You need to start the clock wherever you want to start the clock at. Okay, there's your 500 magic. Now, gotta remember. I'm sure you guys have seen it a hundred times, but it's not just give below 500 and open the valves and let her rip, tater chip. It's blank off time and to see what exactly happens. If we've got a leak, she's going to continually steadily rise. If it's got moisture, oil, refrigerant, whatever, she'll rise some and eventually level off. You're going to have a little bit of air stuck underneath these gauges, as you've just seen it jump up to 1200. She's gonna bounce right back down again to that two mark here in a second. So all I did was just partially close them just to get the trapped air that's underneath the ball valve taken care of. So I'm letting her go back down again. With that concrete, 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 concrete. I'm just a bad person. What can I say? So we'll go ahead and just valve her off here and see what happens. She went up, she's going back down, up a little bit, probably go back down. That's gonna be the release of anything that's trapped in the oil, whether it be moisture, whether it be refrigerant, whatever the case. Technically, if you look at some of the charts, they'll even sometimes pass it at 1500 microns if it just steadies out and stops. So even at this one here, so far we're underneath the 500. But she's, uh, you know, when you got the fancy hoses there you kind of want to just say screw it let's just go a little bit better I mean we've only got six minutes into it total normally you'd be going for 30 minutes with quarter inch hoses and then not even checking your microns at all does it work yeah it works how long it works is the question so it all comes down to how important is it to you that you know that you did the best job possible and if there's any failures it was because of something you did not do to help contribute to it. So we can valve her back off a little bit. There we go. Just see if she wants to stay down there. I usually don't let the videos just roll and roll and roll but this one here, I'm doing it just so you know that it's not trick photography or pull out. Here, we can shut the pump off too. That way you don't think it's pulling through the gauges or through the, the shutoffs. Now on the new blue vac, the fancy one, it'll actually give you a pass or fail in a little bit quicker time frame than what this older one will, which, you know, that's neat. I love the uh, idea of having the uh, Bluetooth so you can document that, hey, I did what I told you I did. And that way, no one can say that you didn't. That's what's really neat about the field piece gauges, the uh, smart probes. You can show what exactly you had. Make sure we got everything tight. I've had leakage sometimes around the fittings on the gauge itself.
just get that thing to drop down to 0 0.2 or 0 0.1, we could call it a day. I, you'll see that right there, it just jumped. Something just released inside the system. If you take things, uh, it would be possible to Now that it's held there, we're going to open up our suction side first, let it come through, and until we get high pressure on our gauge there, then we'll remove the gauge. If you remove it now, you're going to suck crap into the system. These gauges can handle it, they can handle 500 pounds, and they got a sensor that will tell you if they're oil logged or not. And then if they do get oil logged, you can use the alcohol and shake it if you'd like. I prefer to use the pass load cleaner and a spray can. Here's the pass load stuff that I use. You can get it on Amazon. There's the part number right there. You can get it in, uh, I got this one at Lowe's, but intended for internal electronic components only. Cleans and dries quickly, leaves no residue, non-CFC, plastic safe. It's worked really well. I haven't had no problems with it at all. You get a lot of it and you don't have to fool around with that stupid uh, little funnel or whatever trying to get it in there. It's just squirt, squirt, flush, flush, and you're good to go. We can sit here for another 10, 15 minutes and it probably would go up to maybe 500, even 600, and it's just gonna finally stop. But you can see that leak rate, it's slowed down to 0.1, sometimes zero. If it was a leak, it'd still continually go up nonstop. So you can play it back and see exactly how long it took to actually get down to 500 and under it. It was only a couple, uh, minute and a half, I think it was. And this is on an existing system, so it's a big difference between that and a perfectly dry one that's uh, brand new. So there you have it. Does it make it worth it to spend the money on the hoses? I guess it just depends on how important it is to you to do the job correctly as quick as possible. So that's what we have. We're going to wrap this one up. If you like the video, please like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to check the links down below in the description area. And until next time... We'll catch you on the next one.